All right, so we're going to do an example of the first kind of reflection. I said this is a reflection. Well, I'm not going to draw the picture. We'll just check it out. Comparing f of x and negative f of x. Okay? Remember, this is not equal to that. Understand forever. Not the same. Okay. So this is like saying y equals f of x and y equals negative f of x. We're going to see what the difference is. We use a simple function. Let's say um, the function of x is absolute value of x. Okay, well, what's our secret? Table of values, just like in grade 8, grade 6 or 8 or whatever. Okay, if this is our function, okay, if, uh, if I put a, so I have y equals absolute value of x, if I put a, any number in here, even a negative 1, I get 1. I take absolute value of 1. Okay, so 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. You can test that out on your own time. I won't use up your video time for that. When we graph this, this is what we get. These are our ordered pairs. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. It forms that V-shaped line, okay? It'll go back forever in both directions. This is the graph of this function. Now, what about this? Draw another table of values here. I just got to look at this for a second. Okay, this is what we're dealing with. All right, table of values. So I'll draw it again. Minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. If we put in a negative 1 in place of x, be very careful. This is how we do it. If we put it a negative 1 in place of x, that means our function of x in dealing with our f. Uh, okay. What we're saying is. We're putting a negative 1 in front of our function of x, and our function of x is the absolute value of x. Remember I put that here? Function of x is the absolute value of x. So this is what we really have. Negative function of x. Negative function of x. Well, now, the absolute value of negative, negative 1, that's positive 1. Well, no, it's negative, and this becomes positive 1. So in total, it's negative 1 here. Second, right? Second one. y equals negative function of x. y equals negative absolute value of x, because that's the function of x. y equals negative absolute value of 0. Well, that's going to be 0. Let's save our time. y equals negative absolute value of plus 1. y equals negative 1. Next one. Positive 2. y equals the negative value of positive 2. Well, that's... This is going to end up being negative 2. Do you see the pattern? It'll go like that forever. Okay? What I was mumbling about there, about how to figure out what this is going to look like, um, if you need further clarification, send me a quick email. Now let's graph this thing. Our, our points now, we have 1, 1, 0, 0, um, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3. So this is our new graph here. Oops, what am I talking about? Minus 1, negative 1. Okay. It should be pretty clear to see that it's as though we stuck a mirror on this line here. I wish I had a different colored chalk. We stuck a mirror on this line here and just 
uh, reflected it down to the bottom side. Okay. So when we what we're, what we're getting at with this is that if you go from this a function of x to negative function of x, because this negative sign is out here, what it means is there's a reflection in x axis. Okay, a reflection. I'll just say reflection over x. Some x value. Okay. That is what we're getting at. But now, through the table of values, grade 8, now we understand why this is the case. 